The first thing I consistently get asked when someone hears I have a YouTube channel is... I'm sorry, but how many subscribers? How many views? Oh my god, are you famous? Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. So, so... Nice weather today, isn't it? Connection. We all miss being kids. It's partly the exaggerated nostalgia for our childhood, but that nostalgia is founded upon the feeling of innocence and being ourselves. Proving that we don't give a fuck has become the only fuck people give these days. But we all still care about the number of times a member of our preferred sex or sexes glance at us. That's just natural, I'm not into The beauty of childhood is freedom. There's no pressure on anything. In particular, there's no link of work to self-worth. You never think, Daddy, look at this drawing I made, I'm gonna be the next Vincent Van Gogh. I don't think 10 year olds know who Van Gogh is, not, not the point. But there's no, oh, this drawing is good or bad, therefore it will or won't make me famous, will or won't buy me a house, will or won't make people question my stupidity and entire existence. You just kinda wing it. And there's a real balance between kid-like innocence where you sit under the stars pondering deep stuff and wanting that bag because duh, daddy isn't always going to pay the bills. Not to sound like a poet, but maybe both are essential and you just didn't even realise. First, first for my thesis. <laughs> that sounds really formal for a YouTube Usually video. in this context, art is that mental image of the psycho working in the art studio with his green and blue passed out. <laughs> In this context, in this video, I'm probably going to say art a lot. Really, when I say it, I just mean anything that's been made or constructed, including your thoughts. Thoughts are art for, for some people. I don't even know what I meant by that. Purpose. Back to purpose. The purpose of art. Um, Self-expression? Is that too simplified? I do genuinely believe that when you strip away the mental images of the whatever. That's art at its core. This symbolic reflection of what someone's going through at one moment or one stage of their life. To me at least, art is... Art is the... Art is the exhibition of an internal struggle externally. Is that... Does that make sense? It's really that rare combination of deep-seated authenticity and relatability that makes art so special. Because it's that weird thing where you can look at a painting or listen to a song and never have a conversation with the author, but you can kind of say, yeah, I, I get it, I, I understand. And therefore, it's usually the connection of some sort of struggle because it's kind of rare that you sing your lungs out or really understand something that doesn't resonate unless it's Dua Lipa, of course. <laughs> Despite going to a Catholic school, I've never really been religious. So, sorry, mom. A lot of it's just to do with like, I want to be a rebel without a cause. I don't really want to follow God. But it's also because for me, what other people get out of religion, I get from art. I find that statement in isolation kind of interesting because, because for one, you sit in the couch and watch Adam Sandler. And for the other, you read about Adam and Eve. But they're both Adams, right? Maybe Adam Sandler is the Adam and Adam and Eve. But essentially, don't art and religion provide the same thing? Hope. For me, what I can interpret for why people love art so much and why so many people are religious is that the hope it gives them. It's exclusively that people find God in the hardest times of their life. And it's the same with art. The lifespan of an artwork for a particular person is so short and it's by nature. It's supposed to connect with a singular person at a singular point point in time. Paintings, film, music, drama, reality TV, if you count that. They're, they're different, but they're the same. <laughs> the play Hamilton is a story of hustle and arrogance that the protagonist has that leads to his demise. Uh, we all have that arrogance, right? We just don't usually get a poetic play written about us for our arrogance. <laughs> And for music, it's kind of unbelievable the power and mp3 file that some random stranger sung into a microphone can have. It's why every second songs are breakups. We, we sing them unconsciously in the shower before we've even had a breakup. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I'm really laughing about that. <laughs> okay. That was a really long and overcomplicated thesis. Simply, art is someone's story and someone's self-expression that is a catalyst for hope. Now, if you've watched any of my YouTube videos, you know that they're never positive or 
optimistic. Uh, so now for the caveat. Art has the potential to become marketing, not art. Where it's actually the facade or appearance of something that makes it good or worthy, not the actual piece the artist made. Inherently, this marketing bonanza stemmed from the difficulty and therefore competition between artists to try and make money. Like there are only so many, so many poets that can write about images, so many playwrights that spend, so all many day. rappers singing about doing their, business. so many films that can showcase boy meets girl of dream, and even fewer that don't feature Adam Sand. This idea of the, this I, this. This is also caused by the oversupply of creative labor. This is because there's a current romanticization with creative jobs. It's not cool to have a normal job anymore. All of these have contributed to the commodification and consumerism of what art has become. Art has become an intention-pleasing tool, a money maker, a market facade to entice audiences. Inherently, this is quite natural. People have to earn money. And if you want to make money in the creative industry, you need people to desire your stuff. But, ugh, it just sucks. You, you see your favorite artist stop making the stuff that you love because it doesn't make the same amount of dough anymore. Which has caused the transition of pure art about real human issues morphing into this marketable, nonsensical shallowness. There's this notion for creatives that just do the work and if it's good enough, you'll make it big. After all, the cream rises to the top, but that's just not true. <laughs> In terms of success for a piece of art, it's as much about the markability of the product as opposed to the actual product. That's partly why the same singers and artists keep circulating round and round. Because once you've cultivated this image of what you are, it doesn't are, matter so much what you produce because people will still listen because of who you are. Bad habits lead to late. This contributes negatively twofold. Firstly, the critique of art becomes based more on the person rather than the actual art itself. And secondly, the artists then refine every little minuscule detail of themselves to try and fit this public image. <laughs> Loving can hurt sometimes. For the first one, when we critique an art, we like to think we're conscientious objectors, but we don't just forget everything from our past and our beliefs. When listening to an Ed Sheeran song or a particular book for a particular author, you're getting the song, but you're also getting the vibrations from the Scotland redhead kid. It's why they always say you only need one hit to be famous. It's because once you've got that, you've, you've got set. credibility, prestige, and you've also got this thing where people look at your artwork, your cup of tea, and think, oh my god, he's that same dude that made the other cup of tea. So it must be good or bad, or whatever, however good the upper cup of tea was. <laughs> So is it art or markability? Personality or looks? Looks, but personality. The same question basically. How many ugly artists can you name? Uh, yeah, I got one. This notion of pretty privilege is pertinent to the arts industry more so than any other industry. And it's to do with how the attractiveness of someone contributes to the markability of that product. When you switch on a movie, do you watch for the plot or how hot the actors are? Harry Styles is Harry Styles because he's Harry Styles. You, f you feel me? He's famous because he's hot. And you know, he really plays into that with the whole man bun and sexy face and stuff. <laughs> On a less mainstream level like you and me, there should be a distinct separation between love or pure artistic expression and then the art which is there to make money and, I don't know, provide for people's families. And I'm not necessarily on the money side is bad because I think it's necessary for art to be art. Without the commercialization of art, art probably wouldn't even be around. For it. lots of art to be produced, people have to make money because as poetic as it seems, making drawings and constructing songs, there's only so much motivation we will have before we say, uh, let me actually do something real with my life and get a desk job or whatever real people. It's this battle between money and purity, which art kind of stands between. Especially how we judge it. <sighs> I'm just so lost in how to make art. What makes it good? Who's to say anything or piece of art is even worth? We could literally look at the same spectacle, the same piece of work and come to totally different conclusions. And that's the beauty of art that each expression is its own unique thing and there's no intrinsic artistic expression. It also means it sucks for artists because every time they release something new, they're essentially showing the world anything that they've ever 
felt or done and it can all be up to interpretation of someone else whether that's even worth it. good because it has lots of views. No, I think the artist Takashi 6 9 proves that theory wrong. Is it wrong. good because it had a lot of impact? Good because it was really deep and meaningful? Is it good because it makes a lot of money? Is it good because your mum enjoys it? Is it good because it wins a lot of awards? Is it good because it's technically Is it good really? because it's Is different? It good because it's aesthetically pleasing? Can creativity or art be good if no one watches it? What am I... What am I actually this trying convolution, to... I think what I'm trying to get at is the duality between art and fame. Obviously, I don't have many subscribers. Oh. 150. 142. I don't know why I'm acting like I And that's know. kind of depressing, of course, because the only reason people make these videos is for views. As much as it sounds like a nihilistic, depressed manifesto, what I'm trying to get at is that I, ultimately I, I wouldn't regret it if I stopped now. Because it's stupidly fun to sit here and talk in front of a camera and have anyone watch this and kind of relate or connect to it in some way except for the sarcastic jokes. <laughs> That's kind of how I think art should be judged. Even though in some sense creativity has been killed because of the If we come back to this idea of just connecting, I think, uh, it all gets solved, maybe. What's real, real, what's real will prosper.